Hello everyone, my name is Evo and welcome to Cooking with the Koyas. I've been making arancini for years, but it wasn't until I went to Sicily that I realized that my arancini was just good arancini, not amazing arancini, because in Sicily, folks, that's what they have, amazing, delicious arancini. Well, after that trip a few years back, I came home and went to work and started to develop my own arancini recipe and you know what, folks? I've been waiting to share this recipe with you. We're going to do it today because it will rival any arancini from Sicily. So let's get started right now. So let's fire up our stove, put it on a medium heat. Okay, and we're going to start with our extra virgin olive oil. One, two, three, four, five tablespoons of good extra virgin olive oil. And in case you haven't seen it, my recent video where I explain how to pick the best olive oil, I'll put a link in the description for you. And to that beautiful olive oil, we are gonna add a half a stick of butter. So let's get that melted and incorporated in. And in the meanwhile, I have some chicken broth that I'm heating up here, folks, because the beginning of this recipe, you have to make a risotto, but not any risotto. It has to be an amazing risotto. And we are going to build the flavors of these risotto, of this risotto as we cook it. And I'm going to show you exactly how. Okay, let's get this melted down. There we go. Okay, so now the first step in building flavor, garlic. I have one clove of garlic here, folks, that I sliced thin and then I diced and we're going to put that into our butter and olive oil mixture and we're going to just saute that for about 30 seconds just to flavor things up. Now it's time to add our onion. I have here folks one I'm going to say medium to medium large onion. Uh, same thing what I did here folks is I sliced it really thin and then I diced it. Okay, and we're gonna add that. Now we're gonna to wanna to continue to cook this for, oh, three to five minutes. We wanna get that onion softened up nicely. So let's give this a chance to cook for about three, let's say five minutes. Oh, there we go, folks, five minutes. Look at this, they've softened up really nicely. Okay, so those are coming along. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have, I have some arboreal rice here, which is rice for risotto. You could use arboreal or you could use uh, carnaroli rice, but you definitely want a risotto rice. So I have there one cup of arborio risotto rice. I'm just going to give it a quick rinse. Okay, and you always want to wash your, uh, your rice for sure. Okay, so we're going to add our one cup of arboreal rice. And what you want to do now, folks, is get it stirred in and coated with all that beautiful onion and garlic that we had, the olive oil and the butter, get everything coated nicely. And we're going to want to continue to cook this now just the way it is for about two minutes. So you're going to kind of lightly saute this, these rice all on their own, just with the onion and garlic for about two minutes. And of course, folks, you want to stir it for those two minutes. There we go. Okay, so now what we can do, we're going to add here, I'm going to use vermouth today, folks. We're going to add one quarter cup of vermouth. This of dry vermouth, dry white vermouth. Okay, one quarter cup. If you do not have dry white vermouth, then by all means use white wine, but use a little more. Use a half a cup of white wine. So a quarter cup of vermouth is preferred. I really like that flavor that it adds, but if not, at least go with a half cup of white, dry white wine. Okay, now we want to just stir that in and cook that for about a minute or two as well. There we go, and as you can see, our vermouth has been absorbed, so now it's time to start adding our hot chicken broth. Okay, and basically you want to do like a ladle or close to a ladle at a time, and we're going to add that to our risotto. 
will keep our broth on warm and you want to stir that in okay and now so we've been building flavor here already and we're going to continue to build flavor because now we are going to add let's add a little more broth there we go and we're going to continue to add broth it's going to absorb it as it absorbs it we add more but along the way like i said time to build some more flavor so what we are going to add i have here some sun-dried tomato pesto and this is going to add amazing flavor and we want to add that's about one and a half that's another one and a half that's about three four that's about that's an honest five tablespoons which is about a hundred grams of sun-dried tomato pesto which is about three and a half ounces Take that beautiful sun-dried tomato pesto and work that in with your rice. Okay, mix it all in, get all those, get all that rice coated with that beautiful sun-dried tomato pesto. There's a lot of brands out there. Pick the one that you like. Uh, the one particular one I have is from Italy, which I really like, but there's lots of good brands out there. I try to stick to the Italian varieties if, uh, if they're available. Okay, so now that we've worked all that, look at the color already. Isn't that nice? Okay, so let's add another ladle of chicken broth. And again, let's, let's cook that down and then we're gonna add more flavor. So we're gonna just continuously stir. The key is you wanna continuously stir the result though because you want those starches to release. And of course you don't want anything to stick or burn. But the key is releasing those starches and getting that risotto to become nice and creamy. And uh, basically when you start making risotto, you're married to the stove for about 20 minutes. Because um, that's about how long it takes to cook the risotto down. And if I didn't mention, I had one liter of uh, chicken broth, which is about one quart. Okay, so I'm going to continue to stir this. We're going to let the uh, chicken broth get absorbed into that rice. It's going to absorb it and then we'll add some more and I'll show you the next flavor enhancement. That broth has been absorbed. Time to add another ladle of chicken broth. Okay and our next flavor enhancer folks. I have here mushroom bruschetta. Yes another key ingredient. So we're going to add here a good one and a quarter that brings me up to about two and a half three and a quarter and uh, let's go there we go that is about five tablespoons four and a half to five it will be five now there we go which is um, about 100 grams or again um, three and a half ounces of mushroom bruschetta. And then now we're gonna work that in here too. And again, gonna, gonna keep stirring uh, until such time. Actually, I don't think I hit quite 100 grams yet. I'm gonna add a little more. Let's add another, another tablespoon of the mushroom bruschetta because this adds amazing, amazing flavor. Okay, there we go. Now I think we've hit our 100 grams or three and a half ounces. All right, so stir that in. And I'm going to continue with this process until we get this broth down to almost the end. And like I say, this is a 20 minute process up to 30 minutes, but uh, for sure at least 20. So continuously stirring. And now as far as flavor, I'm just going to keep adding the broth until I'm close to the bottom. And then we're going to add some more flavor. So we are now down to our last ladle full of broth and just look at this beautiful risotto. Oh my. Okay, we're going to add some more flavors now, folks. First of all, do you remember we cut a half a stick of butter? Well, time to add the other half. Let's get that melted right in here. Continue stirring and melt that in. Very nice. Okay, that butter is all melted in and we're going to add the rest of our broth, another ladle spoonful. And the last flavor enhancer, folks, 
I have one cup of grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Or sorry, not one cup. <laughs> I'm getting carried away. A half a cup of grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. And let's see, I can give you that measurement in grams. It is 25 grams or one ounce of grated Parmigiano cheese. Now that's our final flavor enhancer, folks. This is starting to shape up. We're gonna continuously stir this and give a chance for that remaining broth to be absorbed. This one's gonna to go to full limit, 30 minutes. And, uh, and that's all right. So I'm gonna continuously stir until that gets absorbed in. Just take a look at this beautiful creamy risotto, folks. Oh my goodness, okay. Let's just take a quick little, little taste of it for salt. Hmm. You know what? Salt's perfect. So keep in mind, you know, the butter you added might have had salt, the broth you added might have had salt, and of course, the sun-dried tomato and the mushroom bruschetta might have had salt. So always taste for salt. If you need more, you can add it right now. But you know what? This is absolutely perfect. I'm going to tell you what, folks. Oh, it's delicious. But it's going to be even more amazing because we're going to turn it into an amazing risotto. And we have to avoid from eating it right now. But if you wanted to, you could serve this as an amazing risotto dish. But like I said, we're going to take it to the next level. All right, let's shut it down. Okay, so onto a cookie sheet, we're going to pour out our risotto rice. Any, um, any tray that you may have that has a good lip on it will do, but I find using a cookie sheet works really, really well. Spread the risotto out a little bit because now it has to cool. So we'll flatten it out a bit and this is gonna make it even easier for us when it goes to make our, uh, our arancini. So that's pretty good. And now we're just gonna let this cool. And while this cools, we're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna, we're gonna start making our filling. Yes, for our filling, let's fire up our stove again, put it on medium heat. One, two, three, four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And to that, we're gonna add, I took, uh, I took, we have one red bell pepper here, which I have sliced and then diced into, as you can see there, small pieces, oh, about a quarter inch chunks. And we're gonna saute up this bell pepper in the beautiful extra virgin olive oil. And the other ingredients that we have to add will be, uh, I have sausage, I have one sausage patty. Uh, if you don't have a sausage patty, you can use a regular link of sausage, just remove it from the casing. The other ingredient is mozzarella cheese that I have shredded, okay? And the last ingredient is of course our sauce. And what I did for our sauce, I used my, what I do for my pizza sauce. I took a can of tomatoes. I got some good tomatoes from Parma, Italy. And I, with a hand immersion blender, I just blended the tomato. And then what I did was I added one clove of minced garlic, one teaspoon of salt, and then about a teaspoon of oregano. And I just mixed that all together. And that's it, that's our sauce. It's raw, but that's what we're gonna use. However, you could use for this recipe, any sauce that you have. Okay, if you have a leftover sauce from your pasta, go ahead and use it. You wanna make a fresh sauce, use it. This sauce that I'm using today is my favorite. And that's what we're gonna add. So let's saute this first before we get to our other ingredients. It's been close to 10 minutes now, and you can see they got some nice color and they've softened up a bit. That's perfect. So now we're gonna add our sausage. And what you're gonna wanna do is break it up into small pieces, whether you're using a patty or uh, an actual sausage. If you're using the sausage, like I said, take it out of the casing and break it all up into small pieces and mix it up with this pepper. Okay, toss it up and just, we're only gonna cook this until the uh, sausage is cooked, which only takes a couple minutes by the time we, uh, we break it down. There we go. So once again, 
Let's just do a little quick taste here. Pepper and the sausage together. Because I did not add any salt to the, to the pepper. Mm, but it needs a little. Okay. So, I will add a little bit of salt. Ooh, and I put a sausage patty. It was a hot sausage patty. A little bit of hot pepper in there. Very nice. So a little bit of salt. Okay. I should have added it earlier to the pepper, but better late than never. Okay. There we go. Our ingredients are now prepared and ready. I should say our stuffing. So there's our stuffing right there. Our shredded mozzarella, our tomato sauce, our peppers with sausage. And we are, are gonna coat the arancini. I've got some nice Italian breadcrumbs here. And I have two eggs that I'm just going to whisk together with a fork. And I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of water and whisk that water in. So more of a, an egg wash. Okay, and then here I have all-purpose flour. So we are all set to go. Now we're all set. Our station is ready. Our risotto is cold. I actually had it in the refrigerator. The colder, the better, because it's easier to handle. So I'm going to scoop up with a spoon, get a spoonful of risotto. Now, depending on how big you want the risotto, or the arancini to be, uh, okay, so I've got a good, good handful there. I'm going to take a little bit of that sausage and pepper. Okay, I'm going to add our beautiful tomato sauce. The sauce goes in. And some shredded mozzarella. There we go. Now we got to cap it. So back into our risotto. And we put a spoonful on top. And this is where it gets a little bit messy. Okay, so now you want to shape them. Now you could shape them into a, a ball, just a, a regular ball shape. But I'm going to shape them more, uh, like I saw in Sicily, somewhat like Mount Etna. A little bit of a, more of a triangular than a round shape to it, if I can. So, basically like that. Okay, and now we're going to... We're going to roll it into our flour, covered in flour. Again, very messy. Okay. In with the uh, with the egg, all around, covered in the egg. Let the excess drip off. We're going to shape this again, folks. No problem. Okay. A little messy, like I said, and then into the breadcrumb. Okay, cover it in the breadcrumbs. Get it all completely covered in the breadcrumb. And then we're going to shape it again. Okay, covered in breadcrumb. And now let's get the shape that we want. Something like that. Huh? Mount Etna shape. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Keep it all together. Okay, there's our first arancini ready for the frying pan. We're going to leave that right now. Let's get another one made. I'm going to make one more and then we'll make our way to the frying pan. Okay, there we go. And our second one is almost twice the size of the first one. That's how big they make them in Sicily. They're big. All right, time to wash up and we're going to go to the frying pan and then I can finish making these. But let's get these two going. So let's fire up our stove. We're going to get some grapeseed oil going here. You could use any vegetable oil, folks, any oil for frying. If you have a deep fryer, even better, use your deep fryer. Um, but for today, we're going to use this pot right here. And we're going to bring this grapeseed oil up to temperature to 350, 360, 365, around that area. Because when we drop the arancini in, the temperature is going to drop too. So let's give this a chance to come to temperature. And again, any vegetable oil will do. Let's take a peek. 350, 352, we're perfect. Okay, that's good enough. 
Let's take our first arancino as a singular, arancini, a plural. Okay, we're going to drop it right in the hot oil. And I'm sure our temperature has probably gone down a bit. So, yeah, it's about 318, 320. That's, that's fine. We're going to keep it around there and we're going to let this deep fry until it is nice and golden on the outside. We want to get that, that mozzarella cooked on the inside, that heat up that sauce a bit and get it nice and golden brown on the outside. So let's give it a minute or two. Okay, we are approaching the two minute mark and let's see how our arancino is. The, oh, that's what you want right there, folks. That's what you want right there. Look at that. Okay, one arancino ready. Second one, Mr. Big, is going in. Okay, same thing. We'll check it at about a minute and a half, two minutes. Okay, it's been about a minute and a half. Oh yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about right there, folks. That is perfecto. Very nice. Look at that. Oh my goodness, folks. Okay, I'm just going to shut that oil down because before I make those other arancini, yes, folks, we're gonna do, we're gonna dig in and do a taste test, that's for sure, because I've got a, probably about another three or four more big ones that I could make from that batch. So let's just cool just a little bit, and then, folks, I'm digging in. Yes, folks, my favorite part, of course. Look at those arancini right there. Oh my, they're cooked to perfection, folks. Okay, let's start off by cutting, let's cut one in half. It's going to cut the small one in half. Oh, 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 oh my. Okay. Take a look at that, folks. That is perfecto. Nice, nice filling in there. Beautiful, beautiful. The mozzarella is a little, little ooey and gooey. Absolutely perfect. Oh, that's, that's picture. I got to take a quick photo before I dig in. Okay, I got my photos. Now, folks, it's time to dig in. They've cooled down just enough. I'm going to start with this piece right here, I think, and I'm going right in with my hands. Uh oh, this one's falling apart on me, folks. Mmm. <laughs> okay, Sicily, look out, because here we come. Hmm. Superb. All those flavors we built in that risotto, right up, coming right up to the end when we put together our arancini and then fried them. Wow, you want to talk about flavor. In fact, if you're tuning in from Sicily, I'd love you to try this recipe and see how it compares to what you have in the motherland. Or if you've been to Sicily and you've had their arancini, uh, try this recipe and again, love to have your feedback. This, folks, is absolutely amazing. Yes, it took some steps along the way to get it done, but totally, totally rewarding. In fact, you could take a little bit of that sauce that we have and you can put it on top and let it just pour over on top of the arancini and serve it individually like that to your guests. That's also a fantastic way to have this arancini. But you know what, folks? I hope, I really hope you give this recipe a try. You know I love it when you make my recipes and you enjoy it. That's what makes me happiest. So wherever you're tuning in from today, folks, I want to thank you for joining me on today's episode of Cooking with the Koyas. And as always, folks, until next time, bon appetito. Hmm. Just nothing but deliciousness. Mmm.